Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Do you ever wonder why there are so many female robots? And have you ever observed why there are so many people who prefer to interact with them? Also, these female robots are getting more popular, from Erica, which is one of the most beautiful robots, down to Sophia, Gia Gia, Asuna, and Samantha, which is the world's most famous sex doll. In this video, we are going to talk about the popularity of female robots. Before we get started, everyone's new to our channel. Hello and welcome to Robot Future, where we will keep you up to date on the most exciting discoveries and mind-blowing revelations in the realm of robots, artificial intelligence, and future technology. So consider subscribing and turning on the bell notification for a steady stream of intriguing robot stuff. Without any fuss, let's get into the video. In recent years, the introduction of robots has progressed, not only in the production area, but also in the service industry, with robots serving food in restaurants and greeting guests at hotels. Of course, robots have no biological gender, but a study done by experts at Washington State University in the U.S. found that female robots are more likely to be favored than male robots. It became obvious. One of the major reasons why female robots are so popular is people prefer to interact with a robot that seems female rather than male, especially if it has human-like characteristics. When the subjects were asked to rate their sentiments when interacting with the robot, those who replied to the female robot felt more at ease and satisfied than those who responded to the male robot. The researchers also discovered that among female robots, the kind with a human-like face is preferred above the screen type. People have a tendency to feel more comfort in being cared for by females because of existing gender stereotyping about service roles," said researcher Subin Seo. That gender stereotype appears to transfer to robot interactions, and it is more amplified when the robots are more human-like. People who engaged with female robots believed the encounter was more pleasant than those who dealt with male robots, according to evidence. Female robots also had an edge since they appeared more human. Another reason for having female robots is because women are thought to be less dangerous or friendlier than males. In terms of how we are trained to relate to particular genders, there's a kind of comfort that is associated with female voices," Habel Palan said. So, more warm, more welcoming, more nurturing, all those associations that are connected with women that are not necessary essential qualities but are socially constructed. According to Habel Palan, their engineers chose female personalities that are viewed as less intimidating to convince customers to accept new technology. That is, at least, the situation in the majority of countries. Domestic work and healthcare are regarded as female-specific fields in which a female robot may perform best due to human expectations. In contrast, security or math tutoring is considered male-centric and consumers may prefer man robots. This matching theory, in which a robot's appearance corresponds to its role in the interaction, argues that people's desire to follow the robot's instructions and the success of their cooperation with the robot can be influenced by appearance. Customers prefer robots with a human voice, emotions, and the physical appearance of a human rather than a robot. Customers find it simpler to interact with robots that seem human-like because they can apply established social standards and expectations from human-to-human -human interactions, according to the study. When a robot is perceived to be human-like, it can better ease and facilitate human-robot interactions. During a human-robot interaction where the robot is human-like, people can easily apply the social scripts and expectations of human-human interaction. They therefore tend to find the robot more controllable and predictable and the interaction easier and more familiar. If people feel as though they are comfortable and at ease with a robot, their chances of using the service increase," Professor Blutt said. Furthermore, before COVID-19, hundreds of millions of people throughout the world were suffering from common mental health conditions like anxiety and depression, and the scope of the healthcare crisis has grown as a result of the pandemic. However, the demand for mental health treatments far outnumbers available qualified providers. Machines are rising to the task of serving as the first point of contact for suffering persons. But how far can a robot brain treat a human mind? People also favored robots to managers because they believed they might provide speedy solutions to health-related concerns. As a manager, you won't have all the answers and you shouldn't give medical advice, but connecting individuals to resources for all sorts of aid is an important element of the support you can provide. You can be a helpful listening ear for work-related concerns 
but you can also make sure they have access to broader resources as soon as feasible. Employees praised AI for providing information that helped them accomplish their jobs more efficiently. Leaders may learn from this and make sure they're providing enough data and insight. People need clarity, and in times of ambiguity like these, they increasingly look to their companies and leaders for guidance. Leaders should be as upfront and forthcoming with what they know as possible. Even when the news is negative, individuals benefit from being informed since it reduces uncertainty and allows them to make good action. When machine learning automated chores and lowered workloads, it was seen as beneficial in reducing burnout. This is also useful information for leaders. Aligning duties and skills is an important part of good leadership since it helps to guarantee that workloads are distributed evenly across team members. Of course, no one can have complete alignment between their passion and their responsibilities, but leaders should strive for as much alignment as possible. Furthermore, because people want justice, the most effective leaders are aware of the ebbs and flow of workloads, assuring equity. Experts deal with the difficult question of how to appropriately employ technology for mental health therapy as artificial intelligence technology, especially natural language processing, progresses rapidly. However, one element is becoming undeniable. Many individuals choose to trust in a non-human confidant, such as a robot. According to a recent poll conducted by Workplace Intelligence and Oracle, just 18% of over 12,000 workers around the world choose people over machines for mental health care. 68% would rather talk to a robot about stress and anxiety at work than their manager, and 80% said they were open to having a robot as a therapist or counselor. There really is a stigma behind mental health globally. Talking about stress or anxiety and depression with managers, employees will hold back. People don't seek help from humans because they don't want to be judged, Schwabel said. These robots can give mental health assistance on a large scale, as well as neutral information, non-judgmental replies, and rank blindness in the working context. A computer can't tell if the individual seeking help is a CEO or a lower-level employee. The use of robots in mental health is justified, at least in part, by decades-old research. Individuals were more inclined, to be honest, while talking to a voice response system than when talking to a real human. Also, according to a release from MIT, with the third environment, the workers were more likely to say that the robots better understood them and improved the efficiency of the team. They added in their study report that the findings suggest workers would rather be a member of a high-performing team than make decisions regarding job delegation and scheduling, especially if doing so would prevent them from getting work done. Additionally, as proven by evidence of an emotional connection in owners of robots, people may create socio-emotional ties with robots that are not expressly meant to elicit social behavior. Several examinations and research revealed that youngsters with autism enjoyed interacting with robots and had formed a strong attachment with them. Our robot looks a lot like a human but doesn't have all the features that a person does. This can help autistic individuals as the robot is simpler. They can focus on one social aspect of communication at a time, said Mohammed Mahur, associate professor of electrical and computer engineering, in an interview. By reducing the complexity and variations of, say, facial expressions, this simplification also restores the feature of a human's judgmental emotion. Children with autism who interact with robots show increased engagement, attentiveness, and unique behaviors, such as spontaneously emulating the robot, according to research. Human behavior can be overwhelming for children with autism, yet a social robot can provide a sort of manageable social experience, Brazil says. You can start to see children exhibit these social skills and capabilities that you may not have seen them perform before with another human being, and then the clinician can start to build on that. Anecdotally, these families love them. These children are doing hours of therapy a day, and the robot makes therapy fun, Scasolati says. One mother told us that she learned new ways of doing things thanks to the robot, and she plans to keep doing them that way. That was fantastic for us. And that's all for today's video. What do you think about female robots? Let us know in the comments section. But before you go, please leave us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell for more amazing robot-related content. Thanks for tuning in with us. See you at the next one. Goodbye.